Good morning. Thank you for joining me. I'm coming to you from Solo Missionary Baptist Church, located in Rougemont, North Carolina, where the Reverend Wayne Johnson is pastor. I will be bringing you the Sunday School lesson for May 21st, 2023, which is entitled, The True Vine. Lesson text comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. Related scriptures, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, chapter 27, verses 2 through 6. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10, and 1 John chapter 2, verses 24 through 29. My name is Charlotte Timberlake. Scripture lesson text comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17, and it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Golden text. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. Today's lesson aim. Facts. To explore John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17, a passage that deals with Jesus' productive relationship with his followers and his followers' loving relationship with each other. Principle, to emphasize the need for Christians to maintain an intimate and meaningful relationship with Christ. Application, to exhort Christians to cultivate the kind of relationship with Christ that bears fruit in their lives. Introducing the lesson. Jesus called himself the true vine, with his followers being the branches. The relationship of vine to branches teaches us much about our relationship to Christ and to each other. Developing the lesson. Number one, the branch to vine relationship. Quote, I am the true vine, end quote, 
is the last of Jesus' seven, quote, I am, end quote, statements in John. Jesus said, quote, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, end quote, verse 2. What does that mean? One view is that it refers to those who follow Jesus superficially and are not truly his disciples. Fruit bearing indicates life. Those who did not bear fruit were dead branches and not truly Jesus' disciples. Many today profess Christ, but their lives do not bear fruit. Cross reference Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. God takes away those things that hinder our productivity for Him. What does, quote, abide, end quote, in the vine mean? Fruit-bearing branches need to stay vitally connected to the vine. The sap needs to flow unhindered from the vine to the branches. How do we maintain a vital relationship with Christ? We maintain that relationship by connection with him, dependency on him, and continuance with him. What does having Jesus' word inside one have to do with getting prayers answered? Those who are saturated with God's word are in a better position to ask according to God's will. Cross-reference 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and unselfishly. Cross-reference James chapter 4, verse 3. Those who live in vital relationship with Christ and do what he says and produce fruit have great joy in living. Number two, the branch to branch relationship. John chapter 15 verses 12 through 17. Jesus commanded his disciples, quote, love one another as I have loved you, end quote. True love is self-sacrifice. We are to abide in him, reflect his love, and to love others in the same way that he loves us. It is only as we experience a deepening love for Jesus and all that he has done for us that we can begin to allow his love to flow into us and through us to others. I will now go over the questions in the back of the lesson. Question number one, who was Jesus referring to when he spoke of the vine, the husband man, and the branches? The answer, with the proliferation of grapevines in Israel, the disciples could easily understand Jesus' message. He is the true vine, producing for his father what the nation had not. His father is the farmer caring for his vineyard. Believers in Jesus are the branches, he said, are, quote, in me, end quote. John chapter 15, verse 2. Question number two. What might it mean that God takes away unfruitful branches? The answer. The farmer, God, takes special interest in the branches. Those that do not produce, he, quote, taketh away, end quote, verse 2. The Greek word here can mean Quote, to lift, end quote. And since the branches are said to be in Christ, some interpreters take this phrase as encouragement. It may picture the farmer seeing a branch hanging close to the ground, unable to produce and needing to be lifted up so that it can. Question number three. What does God do to give his children further opportunity for spiritual growth? The answer, he was adding to the thought of pruning. He indicated that they had already been cleansed by the pruning process. Quote, pruning, end quote, refers to the cutting a plant back in order to give the opportunity for new and fresh growth. Question number four. What is necessary if a Christian is going to produce spiritual fruit for the Lord? The answer, the disciples had been through a lot with Jesus and had learned a great deal by listening to him. If they wanted to continue to be spiritually fruitful, they needed to continue to be godly and obedient to his instruction. Question number five. 
what does it mean for god to take the unfruitful branches and cast them into the fire the answer verse six has been interpreted in a number of ways since the context is about branches in the vine it seems to refer to those who do know the lord perhaps the casting out speaks of a loss of fellowship the withering to a loss of spiritual vitality that accompanies being in a right relationship with christ and the burning of the lost of reward at the time of judgment some think a better interpretation is to view this as referring to professing believers who are not truly saved and are judged accordingly question number six what is one rewarding result that comes from abiding in christ the answer one of the most encouraging aspects of abiding in Christ is the reality of answered prayer. Question number seven. What is a second rewarding result? The answer. Here's another blessing that is a result of abiding in Jesus. It yields the presence of joy in our lives. Question number eight. In what way did Jesus say believers should love one another? The answer, the real test is now given. Not only are we to respond by loving Jesus, but we are also to love one another in the same way Jesus loves us. Question number nine, what is the greatest test of love and what example do we have? The answer, Jesus set the standard as high as it could go by saying that there is no greater love possible than that which is shown when a person gives his life for his friends. Verse 13. And question number 10. How can we be both a slave and a friend of our Lord? The answer. Paul was a voluntary slave for Jesus, as we should be. While we are in one sense slaves of Christ, we are also his friends as we live in obedience to him. He could say this to his disciples because he had told them everything God had revealed to him. We'll now go over the practical points for the lesson. Number one, following Jesus is not an easy task, but through all the hardships, we can be certain that God's desire is to make us more fruitful. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. Number two, the believer's fruitfulness is wholly dependent on his relationship with Christ. Verses 4 through 5. Number three, spiritual fruit is the mark of a true Christian. Verses 6 through 8. Number four, Jesus' relationship to the Father is the model for our relationship to Christ, verses 9 through 10. Number five, the fruitful life is a joyful life, verse 11. And number six, true love is at the core of our relationship with God and with other Christians, verses 12 through 17. Summary, Jesus is the true vine. His true disciples are those who abide in him, obey him, produce fruit for him, and love one another. Some may view this Christian life as static and passive. In this lesson, it has been presented as dynamic and active. It is a life that results from a vital, intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to abide in the true vine and allow his true fruit to be produced in our lives. This will conclude the lesson for this morning. Thank you for listening. Don't wait to pray until you need something. Pray and be thankful every day for your blessings.